negative x squared minus x equals negative 6. That was our original equation, and we're going to attempt to check our two solutions. We'll first start with x equals negative 3. All right, I'm cautious here. There's my x. It's that right there that I'm going to replace with a number in parentheses, sort of covering it up. Okay, just the x is what gets replaced. So I need to bring down a negative. There's that set of parentheses with my exponent on the outside. Okay, bringing down another minus. Open set of parentheses for the x. Negative 6. All right, we're checking negative 3. So in the parentheses, negative 3. This is sure a tricky one with signs. Just be cautious. All right, order of operations. I can, and still I can look at these as three separate terms. Well, on the left side, just two separate terms for this order of operations. In the parentheses, just have a negative 3. So there's no math inside the parentheses. They're just helping us stay organized with the substitution. Negative 3 to the second power, that is a positive 9, but there's still a negative in front. Minus negative 3, let's just turn that to a positive. Minus negative, I like to right away turn that into a positive or an add. Negative 9 plus 3, that's negative 6. Does equal negative 6. So x equals negative 3, checked out, but we knew it would. x equals 2, let's check that one. Not as bad with the signs plugging in a positive number. Still just going to be cautious. I don't know, something about that negative sign. All right. Negative. Open parentheses for that number x. It's going to be 2 equals negative 6. Let's toss in the 2. All right. Keeping these terms separate. Now we've got 2 to the second power is 4. Don't forget about that negative sign. Minus 2 should equal negative 6. And it does. Negative 4 with negative 2 is negative 6. All right. So two solutions, and they both checked out. x equals 2 and x equals negative 3. Here's our next example, x squared equals 9. Now this is the example that we're going to use to lead into our next method, but for now we're still going to stick to solve by factoring. So when I see an equation like this and I choose to do solve by factoring, I'm getting it into standard form. I'm moving all of my terms onto one side so I can have it equal to 0. So I see positive x squared on the left side and that looks great, so uh, let's take away 9 both sides. That's going to go right there. I'm not putting it with the x squared. Cancel equals 0. x squared minus 9 equals 0. And now we solve by factoring. It's a binomial. I hope, I hope that you remember factoring these. So that's an x plus 3 with x minus 3 factored x squared minus 9 equals 0. We have it factored. Now this is a binomial, factoring binomials. If this is not looking familiar, go check out factoring binomials. Okay. x plus 3 equals 0. x minus 3 equals 0. There are those two linear equations, and we'll solve them. Take away 3 on both sides. That's giving us x equals negative 3. This other equation is x minus 3, so let's cancel that minus 3 with plus 3 both sides. And there are our two solutions. How about a, just a quick check on these? If x is negative 3, then this would be negative 3, and still see that in parentheses. Negative 3 times another negative 3 positive 9. Yep, that works. And of course, with a positive 3 in there, for sure, that equals 9. So two good solutions. But let's look at a different option we could have used with x squared equals 9. We recently added something to our repertoire. If, if you have just done 
solving radical equations, and that was solving linear equations, we would do things like add to both sides, subtract to both sides, multiply or divide things, terms or numbers to both sides, and then solving radical equations, you could square both sides. Now, sometimes that led to an extraneous solution, but that was an additional thing that you could do to both sides of an equation and maintain the equality. And we're going to introduce another thing that you can do, but it does come with a warning about using it. So x squared equals 9. I have on the left side where my variable is, this squared term is totally isolated. And so this is even a case where it's strange because, I don't want to say strange because it's not a bad way to go. It's, it's a pretty smooth way to go. So there's nothing strange about it. It's different from, from putting it into standard form. We actually don't want to have it in standard form. We just want to have the squared term isolated. We would not want to bring that 9 over if we're going to choose to solve by doing square root to both sides. So we have choices that will give us the same answer every time. It is important to know all these different methods. Square root to both sides. Now, the catch with doing square root to both sides is that the very next line, I need a, this symbol to indicate I could have two solutions, a positive or a negative. So what you see on this next line is the square root and the square cancel. Now I have my x by itself. Square root of 9, 3, but we have to say that it could be a positive 3 or a negative 3. Now this example, same equation, and we checked, it, we checked those answers, so we already know that there are actually two numbers that could work in this equation. And if you're thinking about the fact that when we were using radical symbols, we always said, assume positive result. And this is an exception, because we don't start with a radical in there. There's nothing telling us about assume positive anything. When we come in and do our own square root, you've got to throw in that it could be positive or it could be negative. We don't know. We're the ones that came in and used these radical symbols. We don't know anything about should be positive or should be negative. We've got to go for both. So that symbol right there, I always associate it with whenever I do this move. Square root on the left side square root on the right side, my very next move is I need add or subtract. So that's, they're in a family. You do that to both sides, you're going to need that add or subtract symbol. It's, gonna, it's indicating, it's really an abbreviation for positive 3 or negative 3. So that symbol is showing us our two solutions when we do solve by square root. So that's where the two solutions are coming from. It's from saying square root of 9 it could be a positive 3, it could be negative 3, and we'll see more examples, a different method where we need to use this symbol. For now, it's just showing us the two solutions, positive 3 or negative 3.